Hi everyone, welcome to the CPAPstore.ca. My name is Tristan. Today we're going to be looking at the Philips Dreamwear uh, Pillow Nasal Mask. It's a very interesting mask. I have some mixed feelings about it, um, but we're just going to kind of walk through the mask and see if it's something that you might want to consider uh, getting. It does have its pros, it does have its cons. Um, and overall, it's, it's, it's a great lightweight mask. It just doesn't work for me personally. Uh, we got an AirSense 11 right here hooked up to it. Um, we will be giving away some AirSense 11s. We're doing some AirSense 11 giveaways. Stay tuned for that information at the end of the video. Um, but I think, I think we have a pretty rock solid giveaway to talk about, so you might wanna stick around for that. Now, we got the heated line up to the elbow here. For those new to CPAP, you might see this and just kind of look Think it's kind of funny looking because most or a lot of masks have um, like the elbow at the front of the face because that looks like it makes more sense. The reason why a lot of manufacturers have the elbow here and why people do wear hollow frame masks is because it tangles a lot less. So to demonstrate, this is you uh, sleeping, having a time of your life. And as you t twist and turn, because you have cool dreams and stuff or nightmares, hopefully not, uh, you can see that the tube stays in the same place, which is pretty cool. Whereas if I were to move this guy here, for example, and you had a front mounted mask and you have your nightmares, look, it's, it's starting to tangle up, right? And choke you. So that's why a lot of people, especially if you move around, definitely consider a hollow frame top mounted mask. There's no real good quick connect with this mask. It just kind of takes off there. So you have to go to the washroom, probably just take off your mask. I think it'd probably be easiest because it's such a minimal mask. Um, this guy does come out pretty easily for washing, so that's kind of a nice little thing there. And to go back in, there you go. And then we have some exhalation ports up there just for all the air that you expire will kind of flow out here. And I think there's a little dot right there that it'll flow out as well. Going around, you have these little arms that go totally around the ear. Big win for Philips with this. Um, there's a lot of masks that just kind of cut straight across. I'm not a fan of them, especially if I have higher ears. Something that goes arches around the ears, something you might want to look at if you have larger ears or higher ears. Um, and that's kind of a, a big win uh, on that. The older Dreamwear mask didn't have that. So the arms go around and then this kind of sits at the back of the head, which is a little more firm place to sit as well. So win-win for the arms and this placement here. At the front, we have the nasal pillows. I have a medium wide on right now. Totally wouldn't fit this guy. Um, but I'll explain why I have a medium wide on there. And then we have an exhalation port, like I mentioned, a uh, little dot right there. So that's about it for the uh, walk through the mask. Now we can talk about it. So the exhalation port at the front is just a dot. There's no diffuser. Um, a lot of pillow masks, for example, the uh, Fisher & Pickel Bravada has um, like a synthetic wool diffuser. It keeps it quieter. And more importantly, it doesn't blow the air that you expire kind of just in a straight line. And therefore, if you have a partner uh, with this little dot, you can feel it. If you, you know, breathe out really hard, um, it's a little jet stream of air that could, could get annoying depending how sensitive your partner is to that. So it's kind of a, not a great thing. Uh, so that's, I guess, con number one. Um, the rest of the mask is a pretty decent mask. I do like the Dreamwear masks. In general, they're nice, they're lightweight, uh, they're very comfortable, a lot of people use them. They are a very, very popular mask. But in my opinion, the pillows version isn't the best. So to take this guy off here and put, a, put them on myself. Okay, so I would normally use the small, okay? And I don't know if I should be doing it like this, but this is how I'm gonna try to explain it. I would normally use the small, but it's kind of hard to see on camera the problem I'm having. So the medium wide kind of exemplifies the problem. Uh, it looks a lot more worse uh, than it actually is, um, but I don't know how to show it on camera because it's such a small area. But when I'm lying on my side and the pillow pushes upwards here, it's kind of gross, but let's see if we can get close here. See right there? It doesn't take much. And as my nose bends right there, um, leaks and that occurs with the medium wide that occurs with the small meat like whatever this guy size I have it comes with a uh, small medium large and uh, medium wide for you know in the fit pack um, no matter which one it has that is a problem I do have leakage right around that area with the nose if I'm sleeping on my side if I'm sleeping on my back however it does fit well I use a small it does seal it, it is a good mask 
Um, but one of the things I mentioned about this mask is you're probably buying it because you roll around a lot, hence you want this. And if you roll around a lot, you're probably gonna be squishing your head in the pillow a lot. And what I find with my nose is that it leaks a bit. I'm not sure if this is a really common issue. I've read some reviews and saw that it was a bit of an issue. If you have used this mask, please put in the comments if, if that's also an issue with you. I really, really appreciate the comments. Um, and I think more importantly, our viewers appreciate the comments. I think one of the culprits for that is the fact that you only have kind of one area to tighten. And as this, as this tightens, as this tightens, it pulls this back kind of in a very linear fashion and it doesn't pull it up and snug the pillows underneath your nose very well. Um, and so no matter how much you tighten, the issue of leakage when your nose is squished on the side uh, continuously occurs. So that's that. I don't know if people with different shaped heads, different shaped noses love this mask. I mean, this mask sells in the thousands, tens of thousands uh, every year. So clearly it works for some people. Just for my personal use, I noticed leakages and please leave in the comments what you think. Now, before I let you go, one thing I should know about this mask is just the fitment. A lot of people kind of have this guy down here uh, where it, I guess kind of looks normal-ish, kind of at the back of the head because a lot of masks have like a lot of support at the back of the head. It should be really right at the front of the head. That's where um, the mask should sit and this guy kind of goes around and snugs up. But once it kind of passes kind of the midpoint, you definitely have it on wrong. So do note of that. One mask I would recommend instead of this mask would be, I guess if you have a structured, if you have a structured point your nose, I would definitely recommend the, um, the Bravada by Fisher & Mikkel. I did a review on that as well. I think I said that it wouldn't work for me, but I think you have a more structured point your nose, I think is a really, really rock solid mask. Um, another mask would be the P30i by Resmit. It has the top mounted crown for a nasal pillow mask. Um, and it also has a bit of an accordion structure, so it kind of fits different head shapes. And I felt that it just kind of fit my head better and fit my nose better and didn't leak as much. So I would suggest the uh, P30i as well. Now let's talk about our contest. We have a few contests kind of going depending on the month you're watching this video. Uh, if you're in Canada, you might want to try our first contest, our November 2022 contest. Our November contest, we're giving away an AirSense 11 um, and some, and I think two Go batteries or something like that, a couple of Go batteries. And all you have to do is be a subscriber and sign up. I'll put the information in the comments. Um, but if it's past December 1st, 2022, then we've merged into our holiday giveaway, our advent calendar giveaway, and this one's a lot more fun. So if it's past December, 2022, I'll put that info in the comments or I'll, I'll switch it up. And uh, that one is pretty cool because that one is open to both Canada and the US. We're giving away an AirSense 11. We're giving away five Go batteries. Um, we're giving away uh, 10 $50 gift cards and 25 $25 gift cards. Again, all you have to do for that contest is be a subscriber and then sign up. This is where I don't wanna state the obvious because I know our viewers are smart people, but look at our subscriber count. It's pretty low, like hint, hint, not a lot of, like we don't have a lot of subscribers. That's why we're doing the giveaway. And obviously not all of our subscribers watch the videos or sign up. So I feel like um, the chances of winning our contest is, is pretty good. Maybe we're gonna get a million subscribers, maybe every, everyone's gonna like this contest, but realistically, um, I think, compared to a lot of other giveaways on other YouTube channels, I think that our giveaway is pretty, pretty good. Um, and so for that, you have to be a subscriber and sign up. And in our holiday contest, uh, the reason why it's kind of interesting is if you uh, follow our Instagram and look at the Instagrams that are posted in December, and uh, you know, go back to our website and type whatever was posted, like there'll be holiday pictures. Every day will be a new holiday picture, just like an advent calendar. Um, you will get an additional entry for every picture you tell us about on, on that day. So we think it's a pretty cool giveaway and, and a pretty fun giveaway. So if you're in the giveaway mood in December and you're from Canada or the US, please consider uh, that contest as well. And with that, we wrap up this YouTube video. Please subscribe, comment, and like this video. See you next time.